Thank you, Sne. Okay, thank you so much, Sne. Good day, UKZN students and staff. Welcome to the first tech talk hosted by the School of Mathematics, Statistics, and Computer Science, specifically the discipline of computer science. As you might all know by now, my name is Lena Rajpal, and I'm the public relations person for the College of Agriculture, Engineering, and Science. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Most importantly, I want to thank our guests from BSG who have taken time to, to come here to present to all our staff and students. I would just like to mention a few house rules for the program. Firstly, the event is recorded. In terms of complying with the POPIA Act, kindly note that we'll use the information from the event for publishing purposes. Should you not want your information to be published for the purposes stated above, kindly send your concerns to rajpaul at ukzn.ac.za. During the course of the event, all attendees will be muted with their videos switched off. If you have any questions during the presentations, kindly pose them in the chat box facility where it will be answered. During the Q&A session, the presenter will give you a chance to ask your questions. Please raise your hand so that the tech person can, allow, can identify you and allow you to be unmuted and pose your question to the presenter. If by any chance attendees, which I'm hoping we don't have, interfere with the presentations, we'll note your details and remove you from the event. Finally, the recordings will be emailed to all attendees present and will also be posted on the CAES website. I would now like to hand you over to Dr. Manla Guetu, who is the discipline leader for the, uh, sorry, who is the discipline leader for computer science. Manla, over to you. Yes, thank you so much, Lena. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our very first Tech Talk of 2023. Today, we host BSG, uh, that is a proudly South African company that is pioneering in the software engineering space. They're here to share with us some of their expertise, particularly in, in the area of Git and GitHub and version control. They'd also like to share with you some of the opportunities they have for some of our graduates. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our representatives from uh, uh, BSG. Within their contingent, they've got expertise uh, and they've also got alumni. Please uh, take the opportunity to ask questions, to engage. I believe they've got a few prizes available for you. At the end, you will have an opportunity to ask further questions. I hand over to you, Ivani. Thanks, thanks, doctor. Um, just to confirm, you guys can hear me, right? Yes, you're audible, Ivani, thanks. Perfect. Um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I'm Ivani. Um, I'm, I'm a software developer at BSG. Um, I, I think maybe just before we start, if you saw earlier, we went dark. Uh, that's because we're a truly South African company. <laughs> so every now and then, ESCOM does its thing. So if, if, if you see us go dark again, it's probably power coming back or power leaving. So don't be surprised. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, 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 I'm gonna go through introductions. I'm gonna introduce myself and I'm gonna hand over to my colleagues to introduce themselves as well. Um, I'd just like to say the, the intention of this, of, of, at least from our side, the intention is to introduce people to Git and GitHub uh, and maybe talk about some, some practical uh, use cases of Git and some of the things that you can do practically with Git. So I'm Ivani, I'm a, I'm a senior software developer at BSG. I've been with, the, with BSG for about seven, seven years, seven, eight years now. Um, I'm mainly a Java backend developer, but I touch uh, a few things every now and then around DevOps, cloud, uh, front end development every now and then uh, when necessary. I'm going to hand over to Ryan to introduce himself as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan. I'm an intermediate software developer too, with a focus on data and analytics, uh, primarily right in Python, but uh, yeah, full stack, all sorts of fun things. Uh, yeah, big focus on machine learning and data analytics in my world. Um, and excited to introduce you guys a bit more to get um, uh, have a bit of a personal story as to how I found it myself. So yeah, I'm gonna hand over to Mark. All right, uh, so I'm Mark. I've been a developer at BSG for five years now. 
kind of intermediate level. I'm a full stack developer or growing into that role. I experience all sorts of things from cloud to low code tools, databases, Java, and now Angular. So a bit of everything, which I'm finding very, very fun. Yes, that's what I've been enjoying. And I'm going to hand over to Mtobisi. Uh, my name is Mtobi Sebunene. Uh, I'm a UKZN alumni. Uh, so I started UKZN in 2018. Uh, and I studied computer engineering. Um, and I joined BSG at the beginning of this year uh, as, a as a grad. So um, I, I work as a software developer, currently uh, working as, as a full stack, full stack developer, basically. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe introduce BSG a little bit. Um, every now and then, my my colleagues might need to stop me from talking because I seem to just continue talking when I start. Uh, so don't be surprised when they start looking at me. Um, and to introduce BSG, I think Dr. Manda said it right. We're proudly South African country. We're a homegrown South African country. Uh, African country, right? Um, and what do we do? What are we good at? We solve problems, uh, business as well as IT and data problems. Um, we have businesses with platform modern modernizations, um, data platform engineering. Ryan would have been involved with some of those projects, uh, building and op uh, operation operationalizing inside net solutions. Um, we have uh, businesses with uh, IT operating models as well as business operating models, and we also have them with uh, client experience and engagements. Um, and our approach in everything that we do, from our people's perspective, uh, we'd like to make sure that our people are empowered to do the work that they do. We try to promote a culture of excellence, uh, a challenging work environment. Um, you know, as, as developers, I think we often want to feel challenged. We want to work on technologies that we, we enjoy and that challenges us. We want to continue to learn every single day. Um, so at the center of everything that we do, uh, is value, right? That's important. We'd like to uh, have value. We'd like to deliver value to our clients. We'd like to deliver value to our employees. So that's very critical. We co-create with our clients. Um, and that's important because we don't want to just get there and do the building without them. We want to build with them. Um, our growth mindset, uh, that's probably one of the most famous phrases you'll hear at BSG, but it ensures that our people as, as well as our clients grow together. We combine our business, technical, as well as our data skills in our delivery. Um, we have a number of clients across different in, uh, industries. Some of them are banking, insurance, healthcare, as well as energy. This list is grown by the day, so I'll probably need to update this, this slide uh, uh, very soon. We've delivered over, I think, 800 projects. Again, this slide is probably outdated also, but we've, we've del delivered over 800 slides. I mean, 800 projects over the last 25 to 27 years. Now, I spoke a little bit about BSG, and I'm going to go into what we call our technology capabilities. So we have capabilities, which are basically divisions within BSG. Um, and, and maybe just before I move on, you, you probably see the, the green uh, bar on your screen pointing at Ryan. Ryan is not the one talking. He, we're just using his mic. So don't be surprised when it looks like he's the one that's talking. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go talk, 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 talk to you a little bit about BSG and our technology capability, right? We have a number of capabilities within BSG. One of them is the technology capability, which is just a division within BSG. Uh, Ryan is from the DNA capability, which is uh, the data and analytics capability. Now, from the technology capability side is uh, full stack development, some DevOps, some cloud, as well as data engineering. Some of the technologies that we use include Java, which is the one that I use, uh, .NET, Microsoft.NET, Python, React, as well as Angular. Um, and who we help or who we work with uh, on these technologies is large enterprises. And what we intend to do is help them architect and build scalable uh, applications. Oftentimes, this means integrating with multiple external and internal applications, both on their own data centers as well as in the cloud. We also help our clients with migrating both data as well as applications into, into the cloud. And this can also involve rewriting their legacy applica applications to be cloud natives. We see ourselves as builders and not configurators. And the distinction is important because you know, we want to come in and build with our clients, right? We don't want to just come in and configure a few things and leave, uh, and leave after that. 
Cool. I'm going to hand over to, to, to Ryan, who's, who's, who's going to be taking you guys through the, the main presentation today. Remember, the, uh, like I said, the intention of this is to, for this to be fun. Feel free to post questions in the chat. Uh, we'll try to respond to some of them uh, on the chat if necessary. Um, and yeah, over to you, Ryan. Great. Maybe just to touch on that last point Ivani spoke about there with configuration, a lot of consulting houses and things will sell a singular product. Um, and that's where that comment comes from. We're not selling a product. We're trying to solve solutions with the client, not in its own isolation. Uh, great, so an introduction to Git and GitHub. So version control with Git. Um, as a quick overview, the idea is sort of a personal story or a true story around how I personally found Git. Uh, then Mark's gonna take us through what is Git um, why Git's important and some of its key features. And then I'm going to take you through a bit of a live demo um, of working with Git. Um, so how did I find Git? Uh, I was in university, much like a lot of you are now. Um, I was traveling home from my girlfriend's place at the time, got held up at gunpoint, and um, effectively someone stole my laptop back. Now, this was in the days before Google Drive was a big thing, before Dropbox was a big thing, internet was a lot more expensive than it is now. And I thought I was doing the right thing. I was backing my stuff, stuff up onto hard drives. I had a flash drive. I'd bought one of the 32 gig flash drives that were a bit more expensive. You know, these days that seems a bit uh, small for some of the stuff. And I thought I was doing the right thing. The problem is, I was carrying it in a laptop bag and only backing up the major changes sort of once a month onto another hard drive at home. So when that got stolen, I had probably about a year's worth of work that was gone because I didn't have um, all of that work backed up in the different places. Um, and it lost sort of some pivotal work for my honors project that I had. Um, and effectively, what that resulted in is me trying to find a way to better back up my data. How do I deal with this? Was cloud the right option? You know, Dropbox had pretty much just released. And this was one of those sort of like, do I go Dropbox? Do I go Google Drive? And what was really funny at the time is I was referencing so many Git repos to write my code, but it wasn't initially in my thoughts. And eventually, when I started understanding more about the development process, Git has become this pivotal um, process in development for me. Can I hand over to Mark quickly to kind of run through what Git is and why it's important? <laughs> All right. So I think the first thing I just want to ask and is how many of you are using Git or know what Git is? You can throw it in the chat or give some reactions such as so I know where we're at in terms of you as an audience, in terms of using it, because at the end of this presentation, I hope that uh, we can convince a bunch of you to try it and to use it because it's so critical. I'm using it every day. This morning, I was you know, talking with a colleague and most of the things I needed to do was just managing our code with Git is so cool. So it's a it's a wonderful thing. I'm good to see some are using some art base. That's a, you know, I really want to make the case for you that this is a wonderful thing. And, uh, and to get into it, yeah, Distributed version control, and that's the beautiful thing on it. Is uh, I've got uh, I'm currently working with a colleague who's in Cape Town. Another my colleague is in a client office. I'm here in the BSG office, and there's another one working from home. All of us together, it's really allows us to check and work our things together. And I'm glad to see lots of you using it. So yeah, most of this should be very familiar to you. So yeah, the key thing is that uh, Linus Tavolts. Uh, he, he's the creator of Git, and 2005 isn't that long ago. So I think that surprised me on it. But yeah, he's also the man behind Linux, and pretty much what you can thank for all your Android phones, most of the internet's running on Linux. It's uh, really influential, and really the story of Git was they got fed up with a commercial tool called BitKeeper, and they said, yeah, "We're not using that anymore. We're going to build our own version control tool." And these days, it's very much the standard across the industry. I'm aware of very few people who aren't using Git because right now, you know, you've got GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, all of those, you know, have Git under the hood. And that's the wonderful thing. You don't even need a website to do it. You can just run on the local 
old of your computer. So even if you're not using an online repo, it's great. But I've heard a similar story. I once had a break in at my house, lost two laptops in one go. But thanks to the magic of OneDrive and Git, I didn't lose any of my work. So you know, if you're using it right, it's wonderful. And I think part of that you know, wonder is this open source you know, part of it, is that's why we've got so many things that serve Git. And you can feel secure that you know, there's not some company that's going to stop supporting the product and then you can't use it anymore. That's a disaster. So open source means that you can be sure that even if people stop developing it, you can maintain it if you really had to. But everyone loves it, so it's not going anywhere. And as for you know, as I said, these repositories, it's your computer and it can be synchronized with the server or multiple servers. You can back up your repository of a server onto a local folder. I've done that and they can be astoundingly small files and keep your whole history of everything that's been done. And I've done that when we you know, didn't trust the servers that were on. So you know, we decided to take it off and we can upload it to a whole other server which could be with a different provider. So yes, so that's the wonderful thing. Keep it on and let's uh, talk about more of why it's so important. And so the collaboration is the wonderful thing. So an example, I'm currently doing front-end development and I've got my one colleague, he's busy creating, styling, making a beautiful button and I'm doing all the back-end work. And the ability just to put that together across our code bases and seamlessly come together has been wonderful allows us to go in parallel with that. And I've really enjoyed that. That's what lets us go so fast as a team. And change tracking is a wonderful thing. Uh, depending on your tool, you can see per line who changed it last and when they last changed it. So if you find a bug, you can open it and see who did that change? When did they do it? And uh, you know, so I'll occasionally shake my fist in the air and call foul at that person, though that is sometimes myself. So, you know, beyond that, you know, you can also change to an old version. And uh, it's been pretty good. So if I'm finding something's not behaving, I'll change back to last month's version of the code. Let's see, is the bug there? Because then I can go like, okay, well, then it's clearly one of the changes in this last month created the bug. So that's been a really wonderful tool. And, you know, you've also got the thing going back to that single line thing, if you see something hasn't changed in five years it's probably fine is the idea that you know, there's sometimes all bugs and uh yeah but going on that the parallel stuff is wonderful i've got uh, you know we've sometimes got you know, just two of us on a project to five of us to a dozen developers but it's, it's wonderful if we can all work on separate features and they come together beautifully at the end and what's also good on that is sometimes one feature will be ready and the other one won't. And you don't interlink them and make them interdependent if you do this right. So we can say this month's release, what's ready, put that in, the rest can wait for next month. Uh, I've even had it in a funny data processing one. We had two branches of code and we saw this one's getting better quality scores. So yeah, that's the one we're going to use. This parallelism is wonderful. And yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, opportunity. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's far more. I, I, yeah, twenty developers is wonderful. I find it even wonderful working with myself. I find, you know, Mark on Tuesday versus Mark on Wednesday are sometimes almost different developers. So keeping it parallel is also a good one. But yeah, with fixing all that, code quality becomes a wonderful benefit that we are, you know, really. It's not just Git itself. It's on the platforms where you really get the power of code reviews where you know, Git allows you to highlight exactly which lines of code have changed. If someone can go down to individual individual line and ask, why did you do that? Or suggest, here's a better way you can do that. This kind of reviewing really has helped us kind of pull in. And when you've got 20 different people working, you know, the strategy of then having everyone check each other before you put your code in really you know, catches mistakes before they really cause trouble. And even then, even if I'm not having someone check it, it allows me to check myself. Uh, before I send my code to the server, I'll check. What are all the things I changed? Did I forget to remove a to-do? Uh, have I made an absolute mess of it? Can I neaten this up? Just having this as part of your practice really does help your code quality. And finally, the, the big one. Um, sure, all of you have used Git before. I've had a Git merge conflict. That's the, the truly terrible one. If, if you're working carefully, you can largely avoid it. 
But yeah, this morning I was dealing with merge conflicts uh, for my work stuff. Luckily, it was one line of code and we knew which was the right one. So it's the great thing is it lets you know beforehand. And instead of tracking whole files, it goes at the individual line level and gets smart enough that if someone's changed, you know, the top of the file, someone's changed the bottom of the file, it'll figure it out itself. And it only is a worry if you both change the exact same thing. So wonderful stuff. I see most of you are using it, but keep at it. It's a wonderful thing. Now let's go into how, how we do it. This is something that will become second nature to you very quickly. All of you using Git, I'm sure this is a standard for you now. But I'm going to rush through this right now because we're going to then hand over to Ryan and actually go through how this is done. So the first thing is getting your code. So either you can create something from scratch by creating a repository, or you can clone one off server. Clone being whatever's on the server, copy paste to your computer. And the beauty of Git is that you can synchronize them. So what we like to do is create branches. The idea is if everyone's saving to the same branch, that's when you create conflicts and that gets terrible. So a good idea is always wherever I'm creating something new, I'm going to do it off on a side on its different version. And later, I'm going to put it back in. So we're going to create branches. Yeah, we've got standards, you might call them features, bug fixes, hot fixes if you're in trouble. Yeah, that's uh, going to be separating your work such that that's your own little workspace. And also, even if locally you make mistakes, you can always you know, throw away your branch, start a new. And then start making your changes. Just fiddle with the files, do what you need to do. Once you're happy with it, committing is when you start making a save point. So if you've got save versions, this is saying, this is what I've done to my files, you'll add a comment. Save that version. And the beautiful thing is whatever you save in a commit, you can always go back to that version of your code. If you need to undo the changes there, it's a simple thing of reverting that commit. They're wonderful. I say commit often and be careful and explain exactly what you did because what well, I mentioned earlier about checking a particular line of code when it changed. If someone saved exactly why they made a change, I can then go back later and go, oh, this is why this code works the way it is. They've explained it to me why this fix is. And sometimes I'll change my mind about what I need to do because I see in the history, they've explained what the purpose of that change was. And after that, yeah, once you're happy with all your changes, push them up to the remote. And that's the important thing. I try to every day, at the end of the day, before I close my laptop, I like to push all my things onto the server in case something happens to my laptop, in case something happens to me. Yeah, the code's all there. And that means yeah, if I'm sick, if my laptop's stolen, yeah, none of the code will be lost and held up. It's a wonderful thing there, that sense of security that you know, I won't have anything get lost. And finally, yeah, pull requests. That's the big one. You're saying, this is my branch with all my changes. Can we put it in with the other people's code? And the thing with the pull request is then that's when the people will look at it, scrutinize your code, and uh, you know, hopefully compliment your code. Otherwise, you know, suggest ways you could have done it better. And that's a great way to learn. I've, I've learned a lot through people you know, pointing out bad habits, ways I can get better, um, or point out mistakes when I've just yeah, completely missed something. It's a, it's a good thing. And um, if you're unfortunate and someone made changes faster than you, you're going to get a conflict. And um, how you resolve that will, you know, really enough time, we'll go into that just now, but it's a, uh, pulling the code back in, sorting out all the little changes. Hopefully someone to refactor, and rewrite the entire file. Sure. At which point you cry, fix it and continue. And finally, all things approved, you merge your thing in and with the magic of uh, Git, everything should work together beautifully, your feature, everyone else's features, and you can start the cycle again with a new feature. Well, that's, that's basically it, but I'd like to hand over to Ryan to show this happening live. Sure. Maybe before we jump into the demo, something I realized our presentation doesn't explain is the difference between Git and GitHub. Um, and since people, some people are mentioning GitHub in the chat, some people are mentioning Git, let's just quickly address that. So Git is the protocol that you're going to communicate with the server, make your changes, it tracks the changes. 
GitHub is an organization or company that's kind of made that a bit easier, a bit more public. There's others like GitLab is a good example. Even some of your uh, hosting services, um, AWS and things being the bigger ones, but some of your smaller ones, even shared hosting things that run on a, um, what are those consoles called? Can't remember what they're called right now. Anyways, uh, like Apache servers and, and their um, systems have Git protocols built into them. Yeah, but buckets and other examples. So think about Git as the underlying architecture and structure and GitHub as one of the organizations that implements this. So we're just going to use GitHub because it's available to many people. There's free tiers, things like that. So we've got a um, GitHub repo that's accessible. Um, so let me maybe chat, uh, chuck that in the chat as well so that uh, people can access it. But basically, this is the repo we're going to uh, go, uh, go through. And we're going to follow this process so that you guys can kind of see how that workflow would, would happen. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to get to this repo page and I'm going to say, okay, I need to clone this or I may have created one. Uh, in GitHub, they make it quite easy. You can literally just hit the create button and you can name it, decide whether it's public or not. But we're just going to go through and say, let's clone this. And now there are two options that I could go to. One of the first ones is I can just use my uh, terminal um, and I can say git clone over here and paste in the URL and hey, look, it's downloaded all that code for me. The other way that I could do that is I can use GitHub's tooling and I can say open in your desktop um, application. And this is going to do something very similar, but it's just got a bit of an interface. And for those that are new, sometimes an interface isn't such a bad thing. And there's a lot of tooling out there. So someone mentioned Bitbucket earlier. They have source tree that describes the branching really nicely. Um, some of your IDEs might integrate them really nicely. And I can show you some of those as we're going through. So I'm just going to clone this using Git, uh, GitHub's desktop. And you can actually go and see that history that we were talking about. So there's an initial commit that talks about the license that I've put forward. There's a template that I use so that I could start building this. I was trying to figure out how GitHub pages works. So you can kind of see the changes I made as I went through. Um, and that's sort of some of that power that Mark was describing as we go through. So I'm just going to open this up in Visual Studio Code as my code editor. And very quickly, you can see immediately, hey, there's a source control thing. And this is how I'm going to describe some of the staging and different things that we can go through. But one of the first things I need to do is go and create a branch, right? Because we spoke about this flow that we have. And you can see, hey, I've done the first one, clone. I want to create a branch. Now, why would I want to create a branch? Well, we spoke about um, standards around this with feature or bug fix or experimenting. So I'm just going to play a scenario out that my UX team, my user experience team, has come back to me and said, hey, we're not happy with what you've um, got in a front-end perspective. So I don't know why this is not showing my visual. There we go. So they're not happy with the way that my form is structured. You'll see that over here, my titles are below my form elements. And they're going, ah, that makes it quite hard for people to read. So they want me to swap that around. The other thing here is I've got a location element. And when we look at this live, you'll see that this creates a whole map. And they're saying that's really hard for them to read. So they'd like me to um, move that around. So I'm just going to very quickly go through and make some of these changes. So the first change we're interested in, I'm going to work my way bottom to top, is I'm going to um, have a label move. And I mean, very simple stuff that's happening here. Um, if you guys don't know the shortcut on VS Code, uh, alt up arrow lets you just move stuff around so I don't have to think too hard. What's quite nice is I can do that with two elements at the same time. So 
I'm going to go through and do this and go through. All right. Now, can anyone tell me the problem I have with the flow that we um, that we described? What have I not done that I should have? Drop it in the chat. No one. Back up. That's already backed up on Git. Okay, let's quickly look over here. So I created my repository, but I didn't create my branch, right? So part of the reason we want to create these branches is we want to describe the work I'm doing. If Ivani comes to me and says, hey, Ryan, what are you busy with? You know, as my senior, um, let me take a look at the code you've written so far. I want to be able to say, hey, Ivani, go look here. Here's an easy way for you to do that. So I'm going to start off by saying, well, this is actually a bug fix, right? And I'm just going to use a forward slash, think of it like folders, and I'm going to say fix labels, right? I'm going to create that new branch. Oh, if you take a look here, it's going, well, I'm going to re-automatically fix those to be a dash, and you can see that warning goes away. So generally in programming, they like the things not to be um, spaces, so keep that in mind. So I'm just going to go create that branch over there, and I'm just going to say, hey, you know, publish that branch. Why do I want to publish that branch? I want to make it accessible to everyone else on the repo. Because remember, when Mark was describing this, I have a local repository, and I have an uh, online or a remote repository that I'm dealing with. I hope everyone's following so far. So we've gone and we've created the branch. Now I want to make those changes. But if I just go and make those changes, well, I haven't really used that branch. So one of the first things that I want to be able to do, and sorry, this uh, chat thing from Zoom is getting in the way. I want to create a new terminal here. And I want to say git checkout. Uh, sorry, it's one word get check out that branch that I created, all right? Now, the reason I'm already on that is because of how Git um, desktop works. So in Git desktop, I can switch my branches by just clicking. The same thing is true here. So if I switch to main branch over there and I quickly say, do that, hey, you switched your branch and you can see the message is different. So the language um, that's used in these tooling is exactly the same as the commands. And that's where I was describing the difference between the protocol of Git and the institution of GitLab. So I now can go and make those changes. And we can see that it's actually already kept some of those changes, even though I changed branches in the middle. So that's one of the really cool things that I can do. Now, if we take a look at this um, example of, of flow that we want, I've made the changes, I'm modifying my files. Let me just quickly double check that before I move on. So ooh, I can see I've moved these things here. This is looking good. It's a lot easier to read, right? Now, you may have seen in the comments, I said, make lots of small commits instead of making one big one. So remember, I said there are two things I want to do. The first thing I want to do is I want to change my labeling, right? Now, I've made a branch called labeling, but I might as well quickly go and do this, right? Because it's not a big change. Now, that very much depends on how your team is managing their branches, right? So you'll come to an agreement, you'll come to a standard within a team. Some teams, I want a feature per ticket that I create, and that's easy to go through. You guys may not be so familiar with tickets. You can think about it like my checklist that I need to do. Other teams, uh, they're a little more flexible in how that goes. Um, so trick is just align to your team. So I'm going to make this first commit here, right? So I can right click and say stage those changes. So remember, 
sorry, let's say I'm happy with those changes. The next step is I wanna stage those changes. When I stage those changes, I've kind of said, hey, I'm kind of happy with where this is at. Let me show you what that means in something a bit more practical. If I wanna move this location element that I spoke about, right? So let's actually say, I wanna move this whole element to the bottom. I'm just gonna double check what I've done here. So this guy, whole element's gonna be at the bottom over here. And then let me quickly take a look at what that did. Okay, so it pushed my input form. Location is here, but oh, I've messed up on this, right? What's nice about this is my stage changes, which were correct, are not what's happening in my most recent update, right? And this is why the idea of staging and smaller commits becomes so important because I've stuffed up somewhere. I've made a mistake. Now I want to be able to revert to that. Think about it like your undo button, but I want to allow someone like Ivani, my senior, to undo my mistake in a quick and easy way and for him to easier understand what's happening. So I'm just going to discard those changes very quickly. Say in my commit message here, um, something to the effect of move labels to the top of the input fields, right? I probably spelled fields wrong, so please forgive me. Um, and if I hit commit, I can immediately see that in my history. And remember Mark mentioned, you can see the changes line by line. Well, look at that. Doesn't that make it a lot easier for someone like Ivani to come in and say, oh, okay, I can see what you did, right? So I'm now gonna go make that second change that I spoke about where I wanna move my location. Um, so I'm gonna say, okay, I'm interested in moving this location element. I can see that this is my location element. I've got some stuff here. So I'm gonna steal all of that, leave the rest of the structure the same, and then say, I'd like my location element there. Let me double check. Okay, it's between my two headers. The rest of my structure still looks good. Ah, I'm happy with this, right? So I can come back in here, stage my changes, say move location to below the four. All right, so this is really quick, really easy. Now, the problem is um, my online repository is not matching. So let's just double check our flow here, sorry. And these elements are a little bit in my way here. So I'm just moving those, you may not see that. So I've committed my changes. But the problem is I haven't pushed that to my live repository. So if I were to ask anyone to go and look at my live repository, even though, wow, these elements get in the way. <laughs> so even though my branch here of fixed labels exists, if I go look at this and I go look at the code over here, my labels are still at the bottom. But I fixed that. What's happening? What's happening is I haven't pushed that code. So what you'll see nicely in the UI is it says, hey, push this code. What you'll see in my code editor is it asks me to sync those changes. Now, there's a subtle difference between those two. When I'm pushing my changes, it's a single direction. When I'm syncing my changes, I'm pushing to what's up on the repo and I'm pulling anything few that, that's been changed down. Now, why does that matter? Remember, Ivani mentioned he's working on a team of 20 people. Sometimes I'm gonna need to compare my code to their branches or the new branches being made. So syncing changes is a subtle difference in that and can be very important. So if I hit sync changes, we can see that that's there. Oh, my buttons disappeared and it's now changed in my UI to say, make a pull request. If I hit refresh over here, we can see that my labels are now at the top, right? What's exciting about this as well is we can see which commit that was in 
and I can see that the last commit made a very simple change of moving my, my data. And we can see that it's trying to make it a bit easier to show you, hey, you're moving these lines from this location to 200 and whatever. So it becomes quite easy to see this. What's also really exciting, if I take a look at this uh, branch over here, is I can see all the commits that were made and we can see those very small changes that were made. Right. So again, if Rivani is reviewing this code, or like Mark explained, he, you know, it was working a month ago. These smaller commits helped me make better decisions on what went wrong where and where we're unhappy. Everyone happy with that so far? Um, okay. Probably not going to get the same response as live. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I give lectures like this so, somewhat frequently. <laughs> so. The next step in our process is we want to be able to review, merge, and delete this branch, right? So what do we mean by review? What do we mean by this, you know, strange language that Ryan, Ryan and Mark are talking about? Well, you'll see even on GitHub here, it's saying, hey, compare and make a pull request. So this is sort of where this review starts to come in. So I'm going to make a, a bug fix. I'm going to say uh, moved labels to the top of fields. And then what was the other thing I did? I moved the location. Um, so sorry, uh, moved location to the bottom of the form. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, OK, I'd like to make a pull request. I'm going to make this pull request. And what's really exciting about this for me is it's immediately telling me there's no conflicts in this branch. What that means is the code changes I made haven't conflicted with any code changes anyone else has made, right? So it's helping me along the way. And this is the sort of thing that GitHub is doing to try and support you, where GitLab will just tell you, oh, there are conflicts. It's not telling you the sort of we've already pre-checked whether there are conflicts or not. And that's sort of where these companies start to add value on top of other things. But what's really exciting, Mark, do you think I could ask you to make a comment? I, I'm, I'm already doing that. You're already doing it. Thanks so much, Mark. <laughs> so ah, there we go. Ivani's made a comment here. Looks good. I can say thanks so much. Um, you know, there might be other comments that are in here, so we can go and look at the file changes and maybe just to explain some of the things that are in here. Um, so I'm going to make a comment on my own thing here, just to show you guys how that works. So I might say, um, should this be in a different diff, All right? to sort of start that conversation because structurally in HTML, you know, maybe this is something you might get into as you guys start developing. Structurally, this is a bit of ugly HTML code, right? I'm not happy with that personally, but I did steal this template from somewhere. So, you know, hopefully we can, we can blame them a bit. But, uh, sorry, in the pull request, sorry, I'm a bit trigger happy today. You can see the conversations coming up. You know, is this first name, last name, full name? Great comment. Now I can start engaging with this. You know, so I can say, good point. Um, let me check with um, our, so we call um, HR in our company PE for people effectiveness. So I'm going to say, let me check with PE what they want, right? So now there's an action associated with this. And you may have seen in the comments, I made a, a point that this becomes a conversation. And that's what's so exciting, at least for me, because now Mark and I, we don't even have to be in the same room and we can have this conversation, you know? And there's a history of what happened. And part of that is I can resolve this conversation. So I'm going to resolve this conversation by, sorry, wrong, um, wrong, wrong code. Um, so I'm going to resolve this conversation by saying full name, right? So just assume that I've chatted to PE. 
I'm going to say, hey, um, stage these. I'm going to say uh, PE asked for name to be full name. So again, remember, we want that communication in our commits to be as clear and concise as possible. And yes, Mark is right. Sometimes a single line can go into a big discussion. So effectively, we can see I've committed. Have I pushed? That's a big thing. No, I haven't yet pushed. Um, so sorry, I can't see my console over here. So I'm going to fetch from origin again. It sunk the changes. Happy days. Um, so now, how do I know if this is committed? How do I know what's gone? So I'm just going to refresh this code. And we don't see this happen here, right? So what do we notice? We notice that it says outdated. And what we get from this is the ability to know the comment is now on old code. And that conversation, in many ways, should have moved on or could have moved on. Um, and yeah, we can just say, I'm going to resolve that conversation. And then just for um, the point of time that's in here, um, I'm going to just say, merge that pull request, confirm that merge. And effectively, what we should see in here is now in my main branch. And I'm doing this live so you guys can see that. In this main branch, my labels are now on top, right? So let's just go through. We've uh, pushed the changes to the remote repository. We've created our pull request. We haven't quite dealt with conflict resolution yet. The, the true conflict right now is time. Yeah. The true conflict. <laughs> oh, am I yes. talking too much? I'm yes. worse than Ivani. Yes. <laughs> I've been trying to look at you. OK, I'm sorry. I've got, I'm blind. OK, mm -hmm. so let's maybe uh, skip the conflict re resolution for now. Um, there is great tooling around that. And then we've gone through effectively the review and merge part of this. Um, so what we've got for you here is Git is a powerful tool. Collaboration, we've kind of gone through that. You've seen live those key features. And our suggestion is that you embrace this idea of version control and source control. So yeah, please adopt Git. It is an industry standard. Um, yeah. Uh, very quickly, uh, we have this as a live uh, web page. So if you guys would like to stand a chance to win um, a take a lot gift voucher, two things. The first person to um, fill in this form is going to get a prize. And then the second thing is the person who, uh, we're going to randomize this, but of the people who answer the um, question correctly here on what your command is, they are going to get into the pool to win a prize and um, we'll contact you through what's been filled in here. So please make sure that you fill in the correct information um, so that we can actually give you that prize. Um, so I've dropped that in the chat. Please make sure that you uh, contact us and I'm going to pass over to talk about growing uh, with BSG and our alumni. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to touch a, a few things on transitioning from university to workplace. Uh, it could be something that that scares you, and it could be you, you could be in fear because you are moving from your comfort zone to something else that is totally different. Uh, but what I found was that in in order for you to transition uh, successfully, you need to be open to receiving feedback, and you should also uh, be able to give feedback people you're working with. Uh, and moving to join us back, uh, it was quite a challenge because I have been in uh, Deben or KZN most of the time. So that was quite challenging, but BSG was very helpful in that. They provided us with uh, uh, a relocation pack, uh, which uh, told, gave us a, at least an idea of 
where you could find a place to rent if you need to rent uh, that should be close to the, to the office. Uh, so yes, PSG was very uh, helpful in that. And then what I wish I knew, um, I wish I knew that Java is so powerful. Uh, so I, I, I was a fan of C++ all the time from university, but obviously I, I was a fan because I learned OOP using C++. Uh, however, I found that Java is very powerful and uh, very useful as well. Uh, and then I, I also wish I knew how to use Git properly because I only used Git like as a cloud storage. So like using GitHub, and I know how to initialize my projects and push to GitHub, essentially to just save my projects. Uh, all the branch stuff, uh, PR, pull requests, I, I learned that here at PSG. And my first impression of PSG is that everyone is friendly. Uh, so from the interview calls, uh, everyone was friendly. Uh, first week I was here on the induction, uh, I then realized that these people are not really, uh, they're not faking it, they are, they are really friendly. Uh, there's no way they could fake it for so long. So, uh, and also I also realized that PSG cares so much for, um, for my career growth uh, and they try to make you the driver of your own career uh, while they assist you to grow. Uh, that. Uh, and then next. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so what what you uh, so if you join a PSG as as a grad, so you would be part. You go into the bootcamp. Uh, so the main purpose for bootcamp is to uh, help you learn the tools and uh, the coding styles that PSG use in the client industry. Uh, so, and then uh, next, I'll just sh uh, sh share with you the technologies that we, we mainly use. So, as you can see, we have uh, Maven, Spring Boot, Jira, Bitbucket, Bamboo, uh, Java, and then uh, MySQL, Docker. And as you can see, there's quite a lot, but you get to learn all of them. And it's, it's an amazing experience that you get. And uh, I've, I've learned a, a lot of these technologies as well. Uh, just like you probably, most of you don't know any of these technologies other than Java. Uh, so that was the same with, with me as well. Uh, instead of Bitbucket, I knew Git, GitHub. So, and yeah, that's that. That is that. Yeah, on my side. Um, maybe maybe before let's go back to the previous slide, right? I, and I think, like Travis said, right? Most of us you know, while in university probably don't know. Most of these technologies, and that's because the universities, we at universities we focus on foundations, which is like very critical, right? So um, you you learn all the foundations, you learn problem solving skills, you know all of these things. Now, once you get to the workplace, we try to expose you to different technologies that you are potentially going to be using when you get to the client space. We give you we have a boot camp because we feel you know you need uh, about four to six months to just go through the learning process and learn some of these technologies that you will need to deliver. And this is just a few of the technologies, and you know we try to support you as much as possible to to uh, to learn these technologies. Cool. Now, if you are looking to uh, apply BSG. Um, where can you apply? You can apply on our website. Uh, if you go to our website and go to the careers page, you'll see uh, a, a way to apply there. What your application will need is your CV, your ID copy, basically the normal stuff that you need to apply for a job, right? A cover letter, why you think BSD will be the right fit for you, why consulting, and why you. Um, and I think this is very critical, right? Because I think you, you need to think about, okay, is BSD the right fit for me? And, when you go through an interview, and that's the whole point of the interview, right? You you need to be able to look at BSG and think about are these guys the right people for me? And we need to also do the assessing, you know, is this person the right person for, uh, for us? And whichever interview you go to, remember to to to, to assess the company that's interviewing you as well, because culture is very important. The values, the people, those things are very important. We we'll also need your metric results as well as your university results. To date, you might not have your honest results, but that's completely fine. And after that, you can uh, go through our interview process and uh, launch your career at BSG. So our applications are currently open. Uh, you can head over to our website. I know there's too many websites now. You can fill in your details on Ryan's website first. Uh, that's important uh, because you know we'll have your details there. We'll probably reach out to you for, 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 for applications if you haven't already applied. So um, 
yeah, prioritize Ryan, Ryan's, Ryan's uh, competition first if you want to win secular vouchers. Um, it's posted in the chat. Yeah, so here's a link for applications <clears throat> as well. Directly, you can just go to that link and start applying. Um, so applications are already open. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Um, Ryan, I'm not sure if you're able to share details on the winners. Yeah, let me just uh, stop sharing first and then uh, I can move on from there and maybe maybe while he looks he looks yeah. for winners uh dr amanda back to you uh and then ryan will uh, announce winners at the end. I, I see we're almost out of time ryan was in, uh, enjoying himself a little bit too much <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I, love awesome. Awesome. I think we're doing very well i think we're doing very well uh we've had an interesting talk and engagement from bsc everyone i hope you've benefited students i hope you've been taking notes uh, I had a few interesting gems that I picked up. You know, firstly, uh, BSG told you that they're not about selling products, you know, but they're about solving problems in collaboration with clients. And then Mark as well came with a brilliant point about the power of open source, that if it stops getting supported, you can take over, you know, because it's available pub publicly. Uh, and then um, Toby C told us about the benefits of, of BSG relocation allowance, you know, the boot camp that Ivani also re-emphasized on, Ivani told us about the exciting context, he's working with 20 developers, you know, and most importantly, the applications are open right now. So if you're on the market, I would advise you to get in and to use this opportunity. And to allow you to do that, uh, as uh, Ryan gets ready to, to uh, announce the winners, I'm just gonna give you one more chance to get noticed, to put your hand up, to say, you know, I'm a confident student and I, I wanna be seen, I wanna join BSG. And the question I have for you is one of the things that Ryan said, what is the difference between thinking changes and pushing changes? Any <laughs> takers on that from our floor? This is open to the students, please be confident and try and be seen. Okay, and represent us well as UKZN students. While these guys are figuring it out, Ryan, uh, perhaps I'll give this opportunity to you to announce the answers, and then we'll try and check if, if anybody is uh, willing to actually go for that. Well done, Tandolwetu. Uh, Ryan, over to you. Yes, sure. So the first uh, winner and first response is Sifo Siso. Um, Moscow, I think is how you pronounce your name. Uh, we'll reach out to you. I see you've uh, given your details there. Um, let me just double check um, one thing quickly. So our next window winner is Into Biko uh, Indovolu. Um, so yeah, we will pass on. So let me post those names in the chat. So. First and second. Here we go. Awesome. Congratulations to our winners. Well done for participating. And well done, Tandulwetu, as well, for offering. Uh, let me hand over to you. What is the difference between syncing changes and pushing changes? I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, go for it, Tan. Also, yes, go for it. Yes, we can uh, do it. When you're seeking changes, uh, you're essentially pulling all the stuff that's already been made by other people. And while you're pushing changes, you're sending out the code that you already made the change to, along with everyone else. Uh, Ryan, I'll hand over to you. Perhaps he left out a few details there, but sort of yeah, in the right very, direction. Do you want very to close. So syncing is both directions. Um, so you, what you described was more of a pull um or a fetch so there's subtle differences there too <laughs> so um what you described as a pull so i'm pulling the changes um normally that happens per branch a fetch is saying go fetch anything on the server and bring that to me a sync is doing both a push and a pull at the same time well thank you so much ryan 
Well, we've come to the end of our uh, um, tech talk. Well done, Tandudwetu. Well done to everyone that came and participated. And most importantly, thanks to our BSG uh, uh, collaborators who've come and shared with their knowledge. Thanks to you, Tobisi. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ryan. And thanks, Ivan. Uh, and we would like to encourage our students, you know, to watch this space. There's more tech talks coming up. The next tech talk is scheduled for the 11th of May, where we'll be hosting FNB. So please look out for the adverts and register there. Thank you so much, everyone. We've come to the end of the tech talk. I wish you a wonderful day and all the best with your applications for BSG. Thanks, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes.